Hello Unique Game Fan, on the other side of the world from South Korea is Yeso, where PAX West is being held with, you guessed it, even more upcoming indie games, beginning with Dare Butt Boxing, a wobbly local multiplayer brawler that looks like wacky fun. Akura is a pixel art puzzle adventure game that would not be out of place on the Game Boy Color, which is an aspect that I love, where the interconnected world and exploration is the main appeal to me. Along in development, Action Roguelite is Below the Stone, one that has a familiar top-down view but does have an emphasis on mining and crafting, so I do wonder what this game structure would be like. Boundary is a first-person shooter in space, looking interesting as a concept, and I do wonder how realistic the physics would be. Red and Fred is a quad platformer that sees you and a friend playing as penguins tied together, trying to make their way up a mountain, looking equal parts challenging, frustrating and satisfying if you manage to beat the game. Cricket J's really peculiar game is a JRPG that sure reminds me of the South Park RPG games but less offensive of course, exploring the imagination of children and looks pretty neat.
An amazing looking entry that I've had my eye on for quite a while is Crystal Story Dawn of Dusk, a 16-bit action-adventure RPG that sure looks like Earthbound but with action elements, absolutely nailing the look and I cannot wait for the release. Just a short teaser for Evolutus Duality, a violent action game with an interesting art style. Flooded is a reverse city builder where you're trying to shore up your island against the rising sea levels looking like an intense and strategic game. Fantasia simply looks like an acid trip with the art style and colours, where it's a side-scrolling racing game or runner, where you're exploring this weird world where it releases pretty soon so keep an eye out. Season is over. Fastest night at the table. I missed the release of Galahad 3093, where it's a first person mech hero shooter that just released in early access, where interestingly, this draws upon Arthurian legend, looking like quite an interesting prospect, although it does seem to be lacking momentum. I've been waiting. Always be prepared for death. You won't see my lance coming. Our destiny, our fate. Ghost Song needs no further introduction, since this Metroidvania made quite a splash when it resurfaced, having long been thought of as vaporware, with a release soon as well making it of interest. I'm not moving, so don't shoot. Statue. 
We could have talked instead. Goodbye World is a pixel art narrative adventure game about two indie game developers where hope it doesn't take as dark a turn as the title suggests. Lost Idolans is a fantastic looking tactical RPG on an epic scale, looking like Fire Emblem crossed with The Last Remnant or Kingdom Under Fire, but as far as I can tell, combat is completely turn based, looking like quite an epic game. You saved my life today. I hope I can repay you someday. War changes a man when virtue is rewarded with suffering. I get the sense he's not interested in talking. We've suffered enough losses already. Sooner or later, it's gonna come down to you against him. To hell and back, brother. Please, Cap. Promise me we'll win this war. There's no escaping it. You and I are fated for this. To hell with fate! You're not taking one more thing from me! I'll tear your world apart. Manor Lords is a medieval city builder with combat elements, where it did get slightly confused between this and Father's Frontier, but it sure looks like it's for city builder fans.
Mars Tactics is a pixel art tactics title that looks great, we are battling for control over Mars, either siding with the corporation or its workers, but I do wonder how different the factions would be. Trying to count to ten. One, two. Sleeping can be the best part of your day. I have a sneaking suspicion that my friendly neighborhood would be the next big mega hit, since it is essentially Five Nights at Freddy's Sesame Street edition. We are desperately trying to escape an abandoned studio where these puppets have come back to life, looking creepy, weird, and very well made. No place for bravery will be familiar to fans of the channel, a bloody action-adventure title about a warrior searching for his daughter, but the best part is that this releases very soon so check out the demo if you're at the show. A game new to this channel is One Last Breath, a cinematic puzzle platformer that reminds me of games like Inside, where you play as Gaia, a being born of Mother Nature herself, having to use her powers to heal a dying world. built to entertain my creator. The smallest
smartest and most talented engineer ever born into this run planet. Let's kick off the top 5 with Cookie Cutter, a pretty edgy and intense metroidvania self-described as having a techno-pop-punk theme where you are a rage-driven android searching for her creator who was captured by the villain with gorgeous animations and intense action. Coral Island is a wonderful looking farming sim title that looks to hit many of the same spots as games like Stardew Valley with farming, fishing, mining and relationships, but does add an underwater exploration where you're cleaning up the coral reef and pollution looking wonderful and releases next month. Demon School did show up at E3 and should have a playable build at PAX West, but this is a tactical RPG with a combat system described as where motion equals action, focusing on moving your characters around the grid and chaining combos together, where you're fighting, I quote, big weirdos in between the human and demon worlds, balancing that with university life with an amazing look as well. We both knew this day was coming. Get him out of here! A day to choose between that tyrant on my throne or me. But while battle lines were being drawn, you tarried in your choice, gathering allies. So it seems I must make the choice for you. The long in development tactical RPG Arcadian Atlas announced their publisher earlier this year, which has allowed them to get the funding needed for the final push after first being kickstarted in 2016, looking like a Final Fantasy Tactics style title with plenty of classes and strategizing. So if you love the classic, be sure to wishlist this game. Shuffle the Atlas. One of the next games from the rivals of Aether people is Dungeons of Aether, being a spin-off of the excellent platform fighter where this is a turn-based RPG with 4 new characters and a fantastic looking combat system that is different from your typical JRPG and for even more upcoming games to look forward to, watch this video right here and I will see you tomorrow for part 2 of PAX West coverage.